I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. In this program, John Carter proclaims, nothing shall be impossible for you. Hi, friend. I'm John Carter. Welcome back. This is a tremendous program. We're talking about the great power of God. And our text is from the words of Jesus, nothing shall be impossible for you. I want you to say it over and over and over again. Nothing shall be impossible for you. Uh, we're talking about the great gospel campaigns that we have seen where the power of God has been manifested with a tremendous outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about campaigns across Russia and uh, Ukraine. Now, you need to see the first part of the program. This is part two. And so I urge you, make sure you get and see the first part of the program. We're dealing with the years now, 1993 to 2005, and we saw tremendous campaigns conducted in some of the great cities of the world, such as St. Petersburg. What a city. St. Petersburg. This was the great auditorium. Tremendous place. Packed to the doors. St. Petersburg. Volgograd. Once upon a time, it was called Stalingrad, after the great dictator. Volgograd. Kazan. Well, we saw the power of God in Kazan. Here is the great Muslim mosque, and here Muslims are being baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, it's impossible. No, my friend, God is a big God, and God is the God of the impossible situation. Kazan, Ekuts, Kiev, Odessa. Uh, these wonderful places, Kharkov, and distant places in Siberia where people were hungry for God. I've never seen so much hunger, where people were so hungry for God. You see, their minds had not been destroyed uh, by the Hollywood people, by the television programs. You say, uh, what are you talking about? I'm saying... Here in the United States of America, we have become brainwashed. But these people had a different sort of brainwashing, but it hadn't destroyed their minds. And because God had been taken out of their lives, they had this tremendous hunger for God. The great Roman Catholic theologian, St. Augustine, said these words, tremendous words. St. Augustine said, our souls were made for God. They cannot rest until they rest in him. Inside every human heart, my friend, there is an emptiness, and only God can fill that emptiness, and these people were hungry for God. Let me tell you just for a minute about the great Kiev campaign. i got so much to tell you today, so many amazing miracles. The prelate, this man who was like the pope for that area, said, Carter will preach here only over my dead body. That's what he said. And so we were in somewhat of a crisis. Will we go? Will will we stay? What are we going to do? We decided by the grace of God, we will go because with God, nothing shall be impossible. I say this to the glory of God. I, I don't want you to misunderstand me. But just before the campaign was due to start, this powerful prelate dropped dead. He was buried on the sidewalk. Almost civil war broke out. The priests went out of the crosses and they were met by the militia with guns. Blood flowed in the streets just before we started those meetings. And those meetings had the holy anointing for the opening meeting that was held in the great palace of sport, this humongous, magnificent theater. But outside for the opening meeting, there was a crowd of 100,000 people who wanted to get in, who were crying out, we waited 70 years for Jesus. Well, somebody let us in. We couldn't let him in because there wasn't enough room. Inside, the place was packed. 
day after day, hour after hour, by people who were hungry for God. Our souls were made for God. They cannot rest until they rest in Him. And my friend, your soul will never be filled with peace until you give your life to Christ. I want you to know, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then the persecution broke out. Every time God works, the devil starts to work also. I want you to hear what I'm saying here today. The government, the local government said, close down the meetings, even though we had a permit. We said, we're not going to close down the meetings. I don't have time to tell you about the tremendous battle that went on. But by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the power of God alone, the meetings continued on with thousands, tens of thousands of people, atheists and communists and even members of the feared KGB, as it was called, coming to Christ. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. We felt the power of God in the meetings. I testified today that I have felt the power of God before I'd get up to preach. I would be feeling completely fatigued because of the tremendous workload. But as I would walk out, I would feel the holy anointing of God upon me. Jesus said, if you've got faith as small as a mustard seed with God, nothing shall be impossible. Listen, we are called for this hour. We are called, as it says in the Bible, for such a time as this. We saw God's glory. The power of darkness was out gunned by the power of the word of God. Why are we so afraid? Why are we so timid? Why do we have so little faith when we serve an almighty God? Remember, nothing shall be impossible. And we say today these words, glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, and glory be to the Holy Spirit, we say it, it is not all about us. No, no, no. We have seen the power of God in the Philippines on death row. We've seen the power of God around the world. And if the power of God is not being manifested in your church, my brother, my sister, it is not God. It is, think about it. But certainly it is not God. Remember, it is not about us. It is about Christ. Let me talk about the years from 2006 to 2020. What we saw. I can never get these thoughts out of my minds. My mind, the minds of my dear ones who came with me, our, our minds are consumed with these thoughts. When we went to India, land of 1.3 billion people, that's four times bigger, I think, than the United States of America in population and a land uh, of millions and millions uh, of gods and we went there in the name of Jesus facing great opposition. We had an audience that was composed of Muslims and Hindus and secular people. People say that doesn't happen anymore. Hey, May not happen to you, my friend, but it is happening where the presence of God is. I can remember one night having an altar call in this great football stadium outdoors and the people came forward by the thousands and the thousands as they pressed forward to give their lives to Christ. I could feel the Spirit of God in the meetings. I could feel the holy anointing of God as Muslims and Hindus came forward by the tens of the thousands. Would you look at the screen? This is not fiction. We are showing you the very, very truth. We are talking about the power of God. Let me take you down to El Salvador. It's a country that's torn in pieces. By the grace of God was Pastor Pacheco, a great man of faith, a visionary. He's a church leader who actually believes. And he said, what we ought to do is hire the National Football Stadium. Here it is. It's a big place. Many people said, this is insanity. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. It's never happened before. You've met people like this. I know these people who are standing in the way of God and sometimes calling themselves leaders. 
But by the grace of God, we moved ahead in faith because with God, nothing is impossible. Pastor Pacheco and his team hired 763 buses. I didn't know there were that many buses in all of El Salvador. 763 buses to bring the people from across the great country of El Salvador. And they knew every person who was on the bus, his town, his street, everything about him, his spiritual condition. And we saw there in one day thousands and thousands and thousands of people baptized. At the close of this program, we're going to show you a video of it. It's, it almost takes your, your breath away. You say, we're living today in the power, in the day of God's mighty power. Now, so the glory goes to God. Let me tell you this. The Carter Report has always had a small team. Hey, you, you know, you got to, no, no, no. We've always had a small team. This is the team that went to Moscow in 1991. Just a, a little team. But we don't, we may be a little team, but we don't serve a little God. And let me tell every skeptic this. I would rather be a part of a small ministry that is doing great things for God than be the leader of a great ministry that is doing small things for God. Because the the power of God is magnified uh, in weakness. The Piranos are part of my team. And other folks that I want I want to put them up on the screen. I want you to see some of these people. Pastor Harold Harker in Australia, a war horse, a fighter for God. I've seen him out in the freezing snow uh, with a hammer working. Uh, people say, who who puts up the great uh, screens? Who builds the great stage? Our team does. You know why many people don't believe in evangelism? I'm going to tell you why people really don't believe in evangelism. It's because it's hard work. It's not like sitting behind a beautiful desk on a nicely padded chair and uh, mouthing religious platitudes. No, it's hard work. It's out in the snow. It's working in the snow. Uh, Norman Matico, also Paul Mickelson, who was a part for many years of the Billy Graham crusade. Uh, You've heard of Paul Mickelson, the great organist, who came with us to Russia and Ukraine and said, I've never seen anything like this. I've seen the power of God. And my team today, Beverly, on these great campaigns, Terence, who puts the pictures through, David, who is in charge of our work in India, MK, Don, and who does the sound? These people, I'm telling you, folks, these people are just the salt of the earth, and I don't have time to talk too much about us. Today, I want to talk about him. We are a small team, but with a big God and a great bunch of marvellous volunteers, I want to say, not the biggest, just the best in the world. The best in the world, yes, because we have God. And with God, listen to me, nothing is impossible if you've got faith like a little grain, like a mustard seed. You say, well, nothing happens to me. Well, your faith is even smaller than a mustard seed. If you've got faith, tiny faith, because it's in a mighty God, God can do mighty things. Then I think of Port Moresby. Goodness me. Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. One night, by the grace of God, we had in those meetings, I'm telling you the truth, we had in those meetings, we had at least 170,000 people. Can you hear me? and maybe more because other people were meeting in another stadium where they couldn't see the pictures, but they could hear the word of God. We had supernatural visitation. God sent a great white dove one night. Supernatural. People said, you really believe this? Of course I believe it. Those people believed it. If a miracle is not happening in your life, my friend, it's because there's something wrong. We believe in the God who believes in us. Then we had a tremendous, tremendous baptism out in the sea in this part of the world. Uh, Thousands of people 
coming to Christ. Uh, thousands of people being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, for this hour I was born. For this hour I came into the world to testify to the truth. That is true of Christ, of course, especially, specifically. But it's true of every person who truly believes in Christ. We have a moment. We have a destiny. As the Bible says, you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want to say to you today, put your life in the hands of God. Believe in God. Believe in the God who believes in you. And get away from cold religious formalism. Remember, nothing shall be impossible for you. So, as I told you when I started this two-part series, we were going to deal with the past. Now we're going to deal with today. Well, right now we're in the midst of a pandemic. We don't have any people working these television cameras. Got four television cameras, no people working them. (laughs) Sort of got them on automatic. We don't have a big television crew, no. We got a little skeleton crew upstairs with David and Don and MK and just and Keith, Jacob. Terence is sending the pictures from 100 miles away, putting them on the screen. By the grace of God, we are still here. By the grace of God, because with God, all things are possible. Right now, now listen to this, because I want your help. I need your support, because money doesn't grow on trees, I've discovered. We broadcast on TV around the world, including India, with this more than a billion souls. People say, why would you ever want to do that? Because there's more than a billion souls. Are we going to forget them? So we're broadcasting in Delhi. We've just started in Delhi. Then we're on a satellite system across India. We work with medical groups. (laughs) On 3ABN, we send children to places uh, like El Salvador, to Christian schools, by God's grace, not by our grace. This is not about us. We are children of God, but this is all about this great God. I say to you, have some faith in God. Believe in the God who believes in you and believe that with God all things shall be possible. We are not afraid of the social unrest. Now, we know today that the world is filled with social unrest. America is filled with social unrest. America is divided right down the middle. But we're not afraid of those things because of God. I love those but texts, you know, but God, but God. Remember, look at this. We have nothing to fear for the future. Hey, except we forget the way the Lord has led us in the past. We have nothing to fear for the future. Are we scared of COVID-19? No, we're not. We're not scared of COVID-19 because God is in charge. He's bigger than COVID-19. Now, we're not doing stupid things either. We wear masks. We practice social distancing. We believe this is a part of the gospel that says, love your neighbor as yourself. People say, oh, I don't do any of that stuff. Oh, my friend, you need to repent. You need to start to love your neighbor. You need to put the gospel into practice. The gospel is not just about you. The gospel is about my neighbor and I'm called to take care of my neighbor. Are you listening to me? But we're not scared of COVID-19. We believe this. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget the way the Lord has led us in the past. Has he led us in the past? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you certain? Absolutely. Are you dogmatic? Yeah, as dogmatic as I can get. (laughs) We believe that God has led us in the past and we do not believe that God is going to lead us to a dead end and forget us. We want your support. Stand with us in the greatest work in all the world. And what about the future? So I've talked about the past. I've talked about the present. The present, now I'm going to talk about the future. And I'm going to read to you one of my great, great, great favorite texts. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. 
I want you to think about it and believe it. It's the word of God. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Hey, my friend, believe, believe. In my Father's house are many mansions. Hey, do I believe in heaven? Absolutely. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. The signs are all about us. The Lord is coming soon. Start to believe the Bible. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Therefore, I say to you, believe in the God who believes in you. So here at the Carter Report, we are trusting in Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Everything revolves around Jesus. It's not about us. It's all about him. We say to God be the glory, great things he has done. Now, this is our latest newsletter. Here it is. Can to hold it up. It's all about what I've been talking about today, full of pictures. If you want a copy of it, then you'll need to write to me and we'll send it to you with our compliments, with our love. Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. In Australia, you send it to Terrigal. The address will be on the screen. But this is our latest newsletter. And on the back page of this newsletter, I have written an article. I've written a a little article about tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. It's called The Saint's Reward. At the end of this road we call life is a bright, shining light. It comes from the throne of God who loves us. I've travelled this road for many, many years. Sometimes the road has been rough and my feet have hurt. Sometimes I've felt my strength was almost gone. But then that warm golden light has flashed upon my pathway and I have whispered, almost home, I'm almost home. I want you to believe that, my friend. We're almost home. Hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. Don't give in to cynicism and despair. Home, almost home. So here, dear friend, is my message to you. We are almost home. That wondrous place will be far better than we can imagine. No more tears, uh, no more pain, no goodbyes, no sickness and no funerals. And Jesus will be there. The good news, the good news is that there is room for you and your admission fee has been paid. That's the back page of our newsletter that I urge you to write and get. There it is, my friend. It's on the back page here. Home. We're almost home. So when you look at the past, when you look at the present, when you look at the future, you can say, to God be the glory, great things he has done, and with God, nothing will be impossible for you. I want to do something right now. I'm going to have a prayer with you, and I'm going to ask God to bless you. Is that okay with you? just want to have a prayer with you. Almighty Father God, we thank you for the great things you've done for us. We thank you for Jesus, our Lord, who died on the cross to bring us to God. We thank you for the good news of the gospel. Take away our sinful unbelief and help us to believe that if we've got faith like a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible. Bless these dear people today with your peace and your grace. We open our hearts today and take Christ into our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my friend, believe in the God who believes in you.
You can have all the silver You can have all the gold Just give me Jesus You can have all the wisdom This earth can hold Just give me Jesus Give me Jesus When I'm lonely And I'm nowhere to go Give me Jesus He's the only One who loved me so Give me Jesus because Hi friend, I'm John Carter overseas, locked up in a hotel, outside in the hallway, there are police to make sure that we don't break this dreadful quarantine because of COVID. Everything has changed. The Carter Report goes on and we continue to preach the gospel around the world. By the grace of God, we continue to do evangelism, but listen, we need your support as never before. We desperately need your help to continue to preach the gospel in India and other countries that are desperately needing Christ. My friend, please hear this urgent appeal. Write to me at the address on the screen. We need your help now during this pandemic. Christ is coming. We need to preach the word. Please write to me in Jesus' name, amen. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.